This is a digital video of the Borg, AGRP, PAP, and TR. Now these are, are Borg's uh, standard uh, systems which are manual set. And of course they've been a mainstay with Borg for decades and have proven to be a very uh, reliable uh, system that does a good, produces a good quality booklet. This is an AGRP system with a PAP folder and a TR trimmer which is a face trimmer. Now these systems, this system currently is connected to an AE22 collator but these uh, attachments can also be found on tower vacuum feed collators, Borg BST, they can be found on tower friction feed collators like the Borg BT12. Either way the attachments are basically set up the same. There are some minor differences from one to the other but for the most part they're all going to be the same as this system. This is the most popular stitch fold trim system in the world. I mean there are more of these out there than any than all the other manufacturers combined. Okay so now we're going to start with uh, setting up the stitcher. Now in the, in the in this situation here what we're doing is we stop the collator with the set protruding out of the collator. Now in uh, however you have to do that on this on the AE you can just hit the stop button with the set on the conveyor. But the reason we do this is we want to see the clearance between the non-operator side guide and the set. You see where the stream is coming out? You want between a quarter of an inch to three-eighths of an inch of clearance. Minimum of a quarter of an inch. Maximum three-eighths of an inch. So that you want that clearance because when the set's coming out it's always possible for one sheet to be turned out a little bit or maybe be move, uh, moved over one way or another. They're not always going to come out perfectly in alignment and that can help reduce uh, jamming. Also, when the set is delivered into the stitcher and the side jogger moves over, the further the set is over here, the further the set's being moved. So, when the set is dropped over to the operator side more as the jogger moves over, it's actually aligning your sheets as it goes. So, it's really a good procedure. So, you set that at about a quarter inch to three eighths. Now, that side guide set to go ahead and jog the set into the stitcher. Now you see the back jogger back here on the AE, the back jogger won't activate uh, automatically in this point, you got to activate it by hand. Now you can see kind of a buckle, you see that wave in the paper, in the, in the set? Well, we, that's a little bit too much pressure on the back jogger, so what we do is we're going to loosen the lock nut here on the stitch head and use the large knob here to adjust the stitch head back and forth, and you can see how the uh, how the set's laying down. Now you can see here we got a problem now. It's too far away so we're going to bring the back edge. Look right here. You can see too, much, too far away. Now the back jogger's touching but watch. We want just a little bit of push. You see that little bit of buckle right there? Just a tiny bit. What that tells you is that your back jogger's pushing real well. You won't want too much but that's ideal right there. Now we have the side jogger that we're going to set. Now you can see the side jogger pushing in Again, we want a little bit of buckle on the side jogger. Can you see the can you see the buckle there? Can you see where it's pushing it? All we want is just a tiny bit of buckle. You don't want too much because if you put this too tight, it can actually pinch pinch the set in in the stitcher and not let it eject properly. Okay, so now we've got our back, our position of our side jog is correct, position of our back jogger. And of course our stop fingers were already preset for 11 by 17. Now well again on your stop fingers what you can do is mark them with a sharpie once you get it set up for 11 by 17 and all your other sizes and just write down what size it is and then in the future you just uh, move it to that mark. Okay so now we have our side guide set we have our guide, paper guide on this side one in the center and one on the outside edge. Now what those paper guides do is help hold the set down as it enters into the folder. Okay, now we'll go ahead and manually staple the set and send it into the folder. Okay, now the set is in the folder, and now you notice here you have these conveyor rollers. They're steel balls and plastic balls that you get with the unit. Uh, the plastic balls are typically put here up front, <coughs> depending on what you're running. Like in this case, you want the plastic balls there because you're running. Uh, a light stock and you don't want a lot of pressure because if you put steel balls in that position they can cause your paper to buckle like that. See it? See it buckling? And you get an inaccurate fold. Now 
we want what we want to do is we want to move the steel balls out to the to the back edge of the booklet where the steel balls are actually riding on the back edge of the booklet. You can see the little indicator right there, that little notch cut out. You want that just a little bit past the edge of the paper. And you set them both in about the same place. And that looks set right. This on the edge of the paper, that one on the edge of the paper. Okay, now our set is laying in the folder and it's stapled. Now, some AGRPs have a lever over here to adjust the pressure and some are uh, automatic set like this one which basically is spring loaded. There's no adjustment. So in this set you can't, but in others you'll find a lever over here and if you have a lever you would adjust it to the left for uh, thinner booklets to the right for thicker booklets. And now we're going to manually um, oh also the the stop for the folder you can see it right there. You see the stop finger? That's a, a metric scale. It looks like there was a previous mark there, but it's not for 17 inch because this is set at 17 inch, which is at uh, uh, 22, uh, 220, 223 millimeters, it looks like. And so this is metric uh, on, on the boards. Most of them are metric, some of them. They've changed to SAE, but for the most part, you'll find them metric. So anyway, the stops, wherever you position the stop is where the fold's going to be. So now we go ahead and run the, the folder, and now we're going to exit. Uh, we're going to exit the folder with the set. Now, one thing you have to do is you have to turn the trimmer off, not the motor, but the trim selector. Down here at the bottom, you have a switch. You can select no trim or trim. The reason you want to do that is because when you're first setting up the machine, if your trimmer's on, you won't know whether your fold's correct or not. So you hit the folder button and it'll run all the way through the trimmer like you just saw without trimming it. And now you can take your booklet and lay it down and see whether your fold is accurate or not. Well, as you can see here, we get it up here a little bit, you can see that our fold is off. You see it? You see how the fold is off? It's off about about an eighth of an inch. But you have to remember now, you, you won't move it an eighth of an inch, you're going to move it a sixteenth. But in this case, our staple's where it's supposed to be in alignment with the fold. So now to calibrate that, we're going to have to adjust both at the same time. So we're going to adjust the stitch. We're going to adjust the stitch back, so we loosen the control knob on the stapler and move the stops back, I mean about a sixteenth of an inch, and then we're going to turn the knob on the folder, this is the knob that you use to adjust the fold position, and we're going to move the folder back, alright, now let's run a couple of sets and see where we are. Run one more. All right. Go ahead and fold that one. Okay, now we have two sets out on the conveyor. Let's see what happens. Okay, our fold is almost there. But our stitch and fold is still off of here. But as you can see, it's really the fold that's off more than the stitch. Look at this. You see the stitch where it is right there, and the fold is what a sixteenth of an inch off. So let's move the uh, the uh, fold back, and the way we do that, we're going to turn this. Lengthen. We're going to lengthen the, this side a little bit, just a hair like that. Now let's go ahead and we'll run this set this in the stitcher into the folder, and let's see if that did it. Ah, looks like we got it. Okay. Yep. All right. Now here's what we did. On on the first set, our stitch and fold were both off about three thirty seconds of an inch. On our second set, when we made adjustments, we put the stitch where it needed to be, but the fold we didn't move quite where it had to be, as you can see there. 
So next, our fold, now we have our stitch and fold both on the crest, as you can see. You can see it on the crest there. 